Well, good morning, everyone. We are glad that you can join us uh, worshiping in the study of God's Word. Hi, I'm David Hawker. I'm pastor of the Cumberland Presbyterian Church here in Morgantown and over in Little Bend at Point Pleasant. Um, we encourage each one of you to tune in at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings if you don't have uh, a computer to where you can, or a telephone or something where you can get YouTube, then we're also broadcast on WLBQ, uh, although we will be a week behind um, there. So if this happens to be a really good message that you'd like and you want to hear it again, you can replay it on YouTube or you can wait for next Sunday and it'll be played on WLBQ. Uh, let us start this morning by going to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given you we given us we thank you for the blessings of life most especially dear god we thank you for your blessed son who was obedient unto death in order that he might die and be buried and rise again to provide a passage of salvation redemption and everlasting life to be with you in glory Lord, we pray for our country. Father, those that are sick and are ill and those that are fearful of being sick and ill, we pray, dear God, that you might touch them in a mighty way. Lord, be to each of us the great physician. Lord, we thank you for being the great redeemer and forgiving us of our sins. Father, especially we pray for those doctors and nurses and caregivers all of those professionals that are there uh, staying in uh, the fight. Uh, it's, it's an important thing that they do, and we are grateful that they are. God bless them. Lord, we thank you for those people that are keeping us safe, those firefighters and those policemen and those military folks that are out there, Lord, that are so concerned about us. We thank you for them. And Heavenly Father, we just pray for our country. Lord, we read in the book of Revelation where it talks about all the different uh, calamities that happened and still people did not repent. We pray, O oh God, that there might be a great revival starting here in Morgantown, Kentucky and, and catching all over the world that men and women and boys and girls might come back to the one and true, the living God, Yahweh, that we might confess our sins and turn from our wicked ways. And then, Lord, we will hear from heaven. Father, bless us as we study your word. It's in Christ's name I do pray. And I ask, Lord, that you forgive each of us of our sins. And we pray believing because we pray in your blessed Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the scripture this morning is... Uh, interesting uh, and it is encouraging and we certainly need that. Jesus talking to his disciples in the Gospel of John chapter 10 verses 1 through 10 the scripture says very truly now this is Jesus speaking very truly I tell you anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them until the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved. And I will come in and go out and find pasture. 
The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. As a child, I used to visit my mother's parents' farm out at Dimple. And uh, they lived up past Richland Church. And there were a lot of things of life that was introduced to me there. Uh, and But one of the things that always broke my heart was I would go with my grandfather and almost every day he would go check on his cattle. He would go and count and make sure that each and every one of them were there. And I would start trying to call them to come to us. And I imitated his voice uh, the best I could. But they never came to my voice. My grandfather started his mournful call for the cows and heifers and bull to come to him. And it wasn't long that they did. You could look up and you could see them. They had heard his voice. They would raise their heads and they would come for him. There is every bit that much of uh, connectedness with God's people. Uh, and him. With Jesus, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the great door. Shepherds weren't considered to be uh, the kind of people you wanted to live next door to because they handled those sheep every day and, and uh, the lanolin and everything that was in the sheep wool. Uh, there would be a smell. They were quite odiferous. And folks didn't really want to be around them. But if you were the sheep, you wanted to have the shepherd. Many times the shepherd would take the sheep out of town every day. And then bring them back at night to be put in their pen. But when pasture was getting scarce, the shepherds would take them out and go farther away from the town. And sometimes they would be so far out that they couldn't get back by nightfall. And they would stay out. But the shepherds knew about wolves and bears and lions that would seek to come in and ravage the herd. And so they would set up a makeshift or temporary uh, stockade or pen, if you will. Uh, many times trees would be uprooted by the wind, bushes would be uprooted by the wind, and they would pull those together and interlace the roots together. And it would make a uh, quite uh, sturdy and efficient uh, pen for the sheep. But there had to be a way for the sheep to come in and go out. And, and so they would make this uh, to where it would come almost together. Just, just about room enough for one sheep to get through. And the shepherd then would lay across that gap. Lay across and become the gate. Lay across and become the access to the herd. And he would literally... Uh, put his life on the line in order to save the sheep. The shepherd was known very well to King David, the function, because as a young boy, when Samuel came looking for who God would call uh, to be the new king after Saul had disobeyed, he went out looking at Jesse's sons, and as he went through each of them, he did not find the one that he wanted. Actually, he did not find the one that God had chosen. And that's important. God had chosen King David because he knew what was on his heart. And so, as they got to the end, Samuel turned to Jesse and said, Are there no others? He said, Well, we've got one young one that's out in the pasture with the sheep, and he said, send for him. And God spoke to Samuel and let him know that David was indeed the one 
that was going to be the next king and be the king eternal, if you will, because our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, is a descendant of King David. If you read in commentaries, especially Will, William Barclay's daily, daily study, wow, especially William Barclay's daily study Bible, he goes into some great detail about the shepherds and how they do things. Uh, it seems that every time I go to one of the funeral homes to uh, comfort a family and to be with them uh, while they mourn the loss of their loved one, uh, one of their favorite scriptures is always the 23rd Psalm. And uh, we know it. And it speaks to us. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. He is personal. He is someone that I know his voice when he calls. I shall not want. Now, that is the definitive declarative statement. It's a promise. We can write it down. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leaves me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This pandemic that has come upon us, have you thanked God for it yet? Have you withdrawn and found that quiet place and come close to Him and hear how He wants to tell you individually that He loves you? If not, I encourage you to do that. I hear people cry, I want to hear God speak to me. I want to hear God speak to me. Well, pick up your copy of the Bible. God's holy word, for it is the sole source of authority from God to man until Christ returns. It is full of God's promises, as I share with my congregation from time to time. If you're on a long journey and you're going to be away from home, uh, you always want to be able to have money to spend. And I can tell you one uh, type of money that will all be always be able to be spent, and that is gold. No matter where you go or what you do, uh, they will take gold. May not take anything else, but they will take gold. Well, guess what? There in the Bible are several golden promises of God. And I encourage you to take a crayon or a wooden pencil. And as you study God's Word and you come across one of God's promises, write it down. And take your crayon and highlight it in yellow. When you come to that, you'll know you're coming to God's promises. One of uh, God's promises that I love is Jeremiah 33, 3. And it says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God wants to show his mighty hand. He wants us to be safe. He wants us to learn from this situation. In my life, all of my 66 plus years on this planet, I have heard my mother say, I lived through the Great Depression. I lived it. And it was a time when things were hard, but she talked about they did not have uh, everything they wanted, but they ate. Uh, one of her favorite meals is beans and cornbread and or cabbage and cornbread and they had a wonderful amount of that and they were able to eat now we look through the bible at god's people having hard times 
and when they had hard times, they looked to him, and he delivered them. There in Egypt, God, listening to his people, heard their cry, and he sent them a deliverer. We look for a deliverer today, and our deliverer has already come, and he's coming again. That is God's only son, Jesus the Christ. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to invite him into your heart. He is just a prayer away. And he wants to bless your life. There is a prayer, I'm sorry, there is a prayer to the shepherd God by Sister Mary uh, Euphrasia Patelier, and I would like to read that for you as we close in prayer. Shepherd God, give me your great heart to love with, especially when my own heart is too small and limited to love. As another needs to be loved, give me all I need to reach out. To those who are lost and in trouble, give me the love and courage to give myself totally to the mission of Jesus the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life so that we would have life in its fullness. May God bless us as we seek to serve him in spirit and in truth. May God bless you this day. We look forward to you. By the way, uh, at the end of this, you will find uh, uh, a picture and an address. If you've been wanting to give, uh, to the expenses of the church, to, you feel like you need to give your tithe and want to go ahead and get it in, we certainly could use it. Uh, there are still needs that we're trying to meet during these days. Amen.